Hey everybody, welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Marash, and if this is the first time you're stopping by, check out our playlist of Large Format Friday episodes. There's quite a few now. If you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday there's going to be a new upload featuring a different facet of the large format photographic process. Up until now, we've kind of danced around the camera a little bit. I've teased the entire kind of setup of the camera, but today we're going to work pretty much exclusively on the large format camera. I've got a little tabletop setup, and today we're practicing large format camera movements, the ability to manipulate the lens plane and the film plane to control things like focus, depth of field, composition, shape, perspective. It's all there on the view camera. It's a pretty neat thing. Now, not all large format cameras are gonna have every movement possible, but I'm gonna go from front standard where the lens goes to the rear standard, covering each and every one of the movements. You're gonna be able to see the ground glass as I see it and see for yourself what happens when you make these movements using your camera. So let's head over there and check it out. All right, with the camera set up and my lens opened up, let's go ahead and take a look on the ground glass and see what we can see. Since the camera's sitting up a little bit, first order of business is gonna be to tilt that camera on the tripod so we can get into a little bit better view. Let's see if we can improve this by adding some camera movements. First one I'm gonna try, I'm gonna head to the front standard and apply some front rise. This is gonna push our image up on the ground glass. Oh, that's not the right way. Let's uh, let's move that to a front fall. This is gonna push those paintings a little bit closer to the center of my ground glass. Yeah, there we go. That's looking a little bit better. And if we move to the back, I can do a rear rise, which is gonna have a very similar effect to doing a fall motion. And if I do a rear fall, it's gonna kinda go opposite world. We're going to raise that image back up in there. If I wanna shift my perspective to the right or to the left, I can also start applying some shifts. This is just pushing that image circle in the direction I'm pushing it when I do it on the front standard. And if I start to apply these movements to the rear standard, just like the rise and fall, shifts are gonna be opposite. So if I shift to the right, that's going to move my composition left. And if I shift to the left on the rear standard, it's gonna move my composition right. So for these next couple of movements, I'm going to be playing around with the plane of sharp focus. So it's always a good idea to make sure, well, my picture's in focus where I want it. So I'm going to start by swinging the lens. When I swing the lens to the right, I'm selecting for a vertical slice in that right hand side. So the right hand painting. And when I swing that lens to the left, it's going to give me that vertical slice going toward the painting on the left, on the right, on the ground glass. And when I apply it to the back, not only am I changing uh, my focus, but I'm also starting to change shape and perspective. And this is a really cool control that we have exclusive to large format. And when I rear swing it left, I'm changing that perspective again. Where swings took care of the left and the right along the vertical axis, I can also start to apply movements known as tilts. These will change a horizontal slice. So when I do tilts to the front standard, I'm selecting a horizontal slice of sharp focus. Front standard movements only change the plane of sharp focus. And if we move over to the rear standard to start applying tilts, we're once again gonna change that perspective, but now shifting it toward the top or the bottom, changing that shape of the objects in our picture. This is really effective for removing uh, what's known as the keystone effect, where a rectangular object at a weird perspective looks like a trapezoid. With a couple minutes of effort and a few different movements, fall, some front tilt, some rear tilt, we were able to get a pretty cool composition. Not too bad, huh? You know what? Let's go change that composition just a smidge. I wanna incorporate swing a little bit too. So I'm just gonna swing my lens in a similar direction to how I swung those paintings. And look at that. I didn't have to stop down my lens. I'm wide open and both bird paintings are nice and sharp. 
Here's a couple of practical examples using large format camera movements to alter your composition. For this picture of the grain elevators, I had to tilt my tripod upward and then re-level the tripod by matching my front and rear tilt to keep those lines straight up and down. And then to push my perspective up like I was up a couple stories, I just used a lot of front rise on the lens. And for this portrait at the Trenton Avenue Barbershop, I really wanted to emphasize this amazing taxidermy bear, but also captured the action of somebody getting a haircut. So I had to do a lot of heavy swing to get just this vertical slice from the mirrors all the way to that amazingly stuffed bear. All right, so to wrap things up, camera movements are an extra layer of creative control that large format photographers have at their disposal. So get out there, practice camera movements. You might find when you're using tilts and swings that not all subject matter is gonna cooperate the same. I was photographing two-dimensional artwork. It was pretty flat in nature. Things like fronts of buildings and artwork, those are gonna photograph a little bit easier with those movements because we're selecting still a two-dimensional slice in a 3D world. When you're photographing a very three-dimensional object like a sphere or a big old rock or tree trunk, it might not cooperate and you'll still have to use your aperture to manipulate that depth of field a little bit more. Not every photograph even needs to have movements. It's just another thing that you can do to control the picture. A lot of my pictures have just a little bit of movement. So a little bit goes a really long way with camera movements. And if your camera doesn't have all the movements, that's okay too. My field cameras don't have near as many movements as the monorail camera I just showed you guys. So when you, Play with your view camera, check out what movements you do have available and master those. So when the time comes to shoot, you know exactly what to do. You're already moving it in position to say, you know what, I can use this to solve my depth of field problem. Or, ooh, the light's running out. What can I do to change my plane of focus so that I can keep my lens further open and get a shorter exposure? It's another way to solve a problem with large format. If you have any questions about camera movements, drop those down below in the comments. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you subscribe and catch you next time for Large Format Friday. We're almost to double digit episodes. You think we should come up with a nickname for this?